Coming up on Arirang News, the International Monetary Fund is predicting that South Korea's economy will shrink this year by 1.9 percent and the global economy by 4.4 percent, both improvements from earlier forecasts. The Bank of Korea decides to keep its key interest rate steady at an all-time low of 0.5 percent, where it's been since May, to support the local economy's recovery. And the heir to Hyundai Group, Jung Yi-sun, becomes the group's new chairman, taking over from his father, the latest generational shift at South Korea's big conglomerates. It's 5 o'clock p.m. here in Seoul. Thanks for joining us on Arirang News. I'm Devin Whiting. The United States has reaffirmed its commitment to defending South Korea, including the policy of extended deterrence using its nuclear weapons. This was in an annual round of talks held Wednesday between the chairman of South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Won in Cheol, and his U.S. counterpart, General Mike Milley, held as a video conference. They also stressed the importance of their combined defense posture so they can maintain their fight tonight combat readiness in the pandemic. This round of talks comes ahead of a higher level meeting scheduled Wednesday in Washington, which will bring together the South Korean Defense Minister and the U.S. Secretary of Defense. The South Korean science research university KAIST has announced that it's developed a technology that can kill the COVID-19 virus using water droplets. Professor Lee sung Sup Lee up and his team said that the new technology produces microscopic droplets containing particles called hydroxyl radicals, which are the neutral form of the hydroxide ion. They kill germs and viruses and do not affect human health. The process is called electrostatic atomization. Because the particles are contained in water droplets, they last longer in the air, making them a good disinfectant. The latest outlook from the International Monetary Fund has the global economy shrinking this year by 4.4 percent. That's an improvement from the last forecast back in June, but it warns that many economies will struggle to get back to pre-pandemic levels of growth. Kim Yo-sun reports. In its latest World Economic Outlook release for this year, the IMF projects a 4.4 percent contraction, up 0.8 percentage points from June. As for South Korea, the finance group expects a contraction of 1.9 percent, a slight improvement from June's 2.1 percent contraction. While signs of recovery in outbound shipment and the fiscal policies rolled out by the government were some positive factors, the resurgence of COVID-19 in the country's greater capital area had a negative impact on the country's economy. Nonetheless, South Korea came in third and second place among the list of advanced economies and among OECD member states, respectively. Backed by improved GDP numbers during the second quarter in the U.S. and Europe, the IMF has also upgraded the overall economic outlook for 39 advanced economies from a contraction of 8.1 percent to a 5.8 percent contraction. On the other hand, it has downgraded the economic forecast for emerging markets and developing economies, with India's GDP expected to fall by more than 10 percent. The IMF also warned that with renewed uptakes in COVID-19 infections leading to renewed shutdowns, many economies face difficulties in returning to pre-pandemic levels. Along with this warning, the international body also downgraded its outlook for 2021, forecasting a 5.2 percent increase in global output, down from 5.4 percent in its previous report. Kim yo -san. Arirang News. South Korea's central bank has kept its benchmark interest rate unchanged at a record low of 0.5 percent. The BOK is sticking with the low rate to offset the uncertainty caused by the pandemic. It says the pace of the global economic recovery has slowed down because of a resurgence of the virus in many countries. Also, it's likely not cutting rates further because household debt is rising and so are home prices. The Bank of Korea cut the rate in March to three quarters of a percent and then once again in May to half a percent. The South Korean government is looking to supply more homes to newlyweds and first-time home buyers through public and private development projects. Finance Minister Hong nam -gi said Wednesday that the government plans to ease eligibility requirements like income standards so that about 90 percent of newlyweds and first-time home buyers can afford to get their own place. Currently, the government requires developers to sell 30 percent of the new homes they build to these groups. 
Also to bring down housing prices, the government's also closely monitoring prices of chunze, a system which tenants pay a large one-time deposit instead of monthly rent. Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon, and for that I'm joined on the line by Dr. Yang Junso, Professor of Economics at the Catholic University of Korea. Professor Yang, thank you for making time today. Happy to be here. Well, stocks in New York down on Tuesday on growing concerns that there will not be a, a deal on new stimulus by Election Day. Looks like similar concerns dragging stocks down in Korea, too. What's the story in the markets today? Okay, well, as you mentioned, the uh, U.S. stocks are down. Dow was down by 0.55%. S&P by 0.63%, Nasdaq by 0.10%. And there's two reasons that's being specified. One is, as you mentioned, uh, the uh, stimulus package. Uh, now, the biggest problem is that we have a three-way fight, and the Republicans in the Senate and the uh, Democrats in the House are not really seeing eye to eye, especially concerning how much the total package should be. Uh, the uh, S uh, Senate seems to want a package that's at most $1 trillion, and the uh, Democrats in the House seem to want a package which is at least $2.2 trillion. Now, usually the White House will be playing a sort of a uh, intermediary, trying to get those two sides to come up with a common uh agreement. Uh, but President Trump does not seem to be able to be able to be doing that at all. Uh, while the uh, Treasury Secretary Mnuchin is heading the negotiations here, uh, President Trump has been tweeting uh, very inconsistently. Uh, at the beginning, he said that uh, he didn't want a stimulus package in the first place, just uh, a new Supreme Court judge, and that threw the uh, stock market in uh, chaos. Uh, so then President Trump said that he wanted the stimulus, and initially he seemed to be backing the $1.8 trillion compromise, but now he's saying that he wants even more. He wants the uh, stimulus to go higher than the Senate or the uh, House proposal, and his key idea is to give everybody cash as quickly as possible uh, before the election day. In fact, this has been his strategy for a lot of different cases. When he was doing the uh, drug the drug price negotiation, uh, that negotiation failed because President Trump wanted the drug companies to mail a hundred dollar check to every uh, senior citizen in the United States. Uh, the food aid plan that uh, President Trump was working on that fell apart also because he wanted his signature on each box of food that was going to uh, the uh, uh, people who were getting the aid. Uh, so it seems that President Trump sort of a desperation or his desire to make his name out there before the election day is actually working against uh, the uh, stimulus or, and uh, the uh, stock market, which she believes to be the barometer of the real economy, which is not exactly true. Uh, but uh, this uh, U.S. Uh, down market is affecting other markets as well. Uh, the Asian market. Uh, fell for the most part, though Nikkei uh, rose a little bit. And then uh, Korean market, as you mentioned, uh, it fell as well. Uh, Kospi fell by 0.94%, Kostak by 1.20%. Uh, but the uh, European markets, which are just starting, uh, the uh, DAX and FTSE seems to be actually be uh, doing well. They're uh, going up, uh, but the uh, CAC is somewhat still down, but very slightly. Well, now, the other big story today, the Bank of Korea keeping interest rates uh, steady at 0.5 percent, its key rate. This is a record low. It's the fourth month now that it's been there. What do you make of this decision, Professor, and how long will it stay there? Okay, well, uh, Korea can't really uh, drop the rates anymore because it's at 0.50 percent. It's a historical high uh, already. Compare, uh, if you uh, look at the inflation rate, it's likely to be a negative real inflation rate. Uh, so I think all the market players are basically not expecting the uh, rates to go down unless there is a disaster. Uh, but uh, some of them were hoping that there would be more quantitative easing. Uh, that is that the uh, Bank of Korea would purchase 
uh, securities other than government and public corporation securities, uh, but the uh, Bank of Korea has ruled that out for now, saying that they are not uh, going to uh, purchase any uh, other securities for now. Um, and uh, the uh, question of uh, with uh, the uh, there's concerns about household debt. Uh, the uh, Bank of Korea has expressed some concerns over the. Uh, continual uh, rising of the uh, household debt. So it really doesn't look like the uh, Bank of Korea has any further interest cuts in mind, at least uh, until the end of this year at the very earliest. And now we have the IMF predicting the Korean economy to shrink this year by 1.9 percent. This is actually an improvement, of course, from its previous forecast in June, which was uh, two tenths of a percent lower. What stands out to you about this forecast? Okay, well, they actually... Uh, uh, thinking that the global economy will grow, as, you, as the uh, previous story that you had said, uh, the uh, growth rate was readjusted from minus 5.2 percent to minus 4.4 percent, and this is being led by advanced countries. Uh, the advanced countries' estimates, for the most part, rose. For example, United States' previous estimate was minus 8.1 percent, but now it's 5.8 percent. Uh, the estimates for the uh, eurozone and uh, the uh, other advanced countries rose as well, including Korea. Uh, Korea is third among the advanced countries behind Taiwan, which has zero uh, growth rate, and Lithuania, which has minus 1.8 percent. So you can argue that Korea is not doing that badly. Uh, this reflects, I think, the uh, growth that we saw in these advanced countries uh, in uh, June, July, and August. Uh, I'm not sure if it reflects some of the uh, slowdowns that we saw in the European economy and the U.S. economy uh, in September because, well, in order to calculate these global projections, uh, the uh, IMF does not always work with the very latest data. Uh, so uh, we did see some slowdown in the U.S. recovery. We are seeing some a slowdown in the European economy, so that may put some damper on these projections. Uh, and then the uh, emerging economies, the developing economies, the uh, IMF has said that their situation uh, may be getting worse because, well, their uh, growth rates are actually downgraded from minus 3.1 percent to minus 3.3 percent. For example, India now is expected their GDP will fall by uh, minus uh, 10.3 percent. Uh, that's a projection of lower projection of 5.8 percentage points. So that's a huge change in their projection. But China is expected to do even better than what previously thought. Previously, uh, China was thought to grow by 1.0 percent, but now 1.9 percent. So the, uh, we are not out of the coronavirus uh, problems yet. Uh, and uh, I tend to be a bit more pessimistic than the uh, IMF numbers because, well, the uh, numbers for the last couple of weeks do seem like it's getting worse rather than better. Indeed. All right, Professor, we'll have to leave it there for today. Thank you for sharing your insights. We appreciate it. Thank you. Well, South Korea's second biggest conglomerate, Hyundai Motor Group, has promoted its longtime heir apparent, Chung Yi Sun, to chairman. This is Hyundai's first generational handover in 20 years. Om ji has more. Hyundai Motor Group's heir apparent Jung Yi Sun has been promoted to chairman of the group. He was approved as chairman on Wednesday in a special board meeting, replacing his father Jung Mong Gu, who is now in his 80s and took the post in 2000. I would like to inform all Hyundai employees around the world that as of today, our leader Jung Mong Gu is honorary chairman, and I'm officially taking the post of chairman of Hyundai Motor Group. Jung Yi-sun's promotion comes two years and a month after he was named executive vice chairman, a role in which he has exercised increasingly visible leadership. In particular, he has been leading the group's push to raise its status in the global markets for electric vehicles and hydrogen cars. Jung has been meeting with the executives of local conglomerates like Samsung, SK and LG in the past couple of months, seeking to form an alliance in the supply of electric car batteries. South Korean conglomerates like Hyundai have been transitioning to a new generation of leaders. The heads of the country's four largest conglomerates are under the age of 60. Jung himself was born in 1970. The heir to Samsung Group, Lee Jae-yong, who is vice chairman of Samsung Electronics, was born in 1968. 
The oldest head of the Big Four is the chairman of SK Group, Choi Tae-won, who was born in 1960, and the youngest is the chairman of LG Group, Gu Gwang-mo, who is in his early 40s. They are set to meet on occasion, and experts say that if South Korean automakers and battery producers can work together, they could lead the world's electric car market. Om ji Arirang News. And that brings us to the end of this newscast. Thank you for watching. More live news coming your way at 7 p.m. Korea time.